Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the synthesis of disyherbals A, C and D. This work was published in JAX by Sheng Kang Hu and Yi Feng Tang. The disyherbals were first isolated by Lin and co-workers from the Dissidia marine sponge in 2016. Due to their interesting structures and promising biological activities, these compounds have attracted the attention of the synthesis community and total syntheses have been published by the groups of Lu and Schmalz. Based on these synthetic investigations, the original proposed structures were found to be incorrect and have since been revised. These compounds show a lot of interesting biological activity, including anti-cancer activity, with disyherbal A showing an IC50 value of just 0.58 micromoles against NCI H99 cancer cells. These compounds have some very interesting structural challenges, such as the 66566 polycyclic framework that contains five contiguous quaternary stereocenters. In addition, different members of this family have different oxidation patterns, which makes it important to design a synthetic route that can easily be modified to produce different compounds belonging to this interesting family. The strategy that these authors devised utilizes a very unusual 1-2 anionic rearrangement, coupled with the cyclopropane fragmentation and cyclization sequence. To introduce the oxygen functionality, they plan to use a late stage intermediate and functionalize it using O'Reilly oxidation. So let's jump in and look at the synthesis. The first step was to protect the wylan mitre ketone with ethylene dicol, which was catalyzed by CSA. This first protonates the ketone, allowing the hydroxyl group to attack, forming a hemiacetal that is further protonated and eliminates water. The other hydroxyl group present in ethylene glycol then undergoes an intramolecular attack to complete the formation of the acetal. Triethyl orthoformate was added to the reaction to abstract the water and ensure that the reaction went to completion. With this protected, they then carried out an alkylation. Potassium terbutoxide first deprotonates the molecule, forming a conjugated dienone that was then alkylated at the alpha position by a reaction with a bromide. This formed the product as a single diastereomer and this selectivity can be attributed to steric hindrance from the axial methyl group directing the incoming electrophile to the bottom face of the molecule. The initial deprotonation was carried out at 60 degrees Celsius and this was to ensure the formation of the thermodynamic enolate as lower temperatures could favour the deprotonation of the alpha position. Once this was formed, it was then cooled to zero degrees before the addition of the electrophile as the lower temperatures would aid in the control of the stereoselectivity. In the next step, a Wittig reaction was carried out using methyl triphenylphosphonium bromide. This was first deprotonated by potassium terbutoxide to form an illid that then underwent addition to the carbonyl. This formed a four membered oxophosphatane intermediate that decomposes to form the alkene. In the next step, a deprotection was carried out using hydrochloric acid, which hydrolyzed the acetal, forming the ketone in a 90% yield over two steps. The alkene, formed from the Wittig reaction, was then hydrogenated using Wilkinson's catalyst and hydrogen gas. This formed the product in a 96% yield, with a 1.9 to 1 DR. The researchers screened a wide range of conditions for this reaction. However, they were not able to improve on this stereoselectivity. Taking this compound forward, another Wittig reaction using triphenylmethylphosphonium bromide was carried out, and this product was then oxidized to convert the dimethoxybenzyl ether into a paraquinone. This was carried out using phenyl iodine dipivalate with PTSA and formed the product in a 48% yield. With this quinone complete, they could then perform the critical photocycloaddition reaction. The compound was radiated with light at 365 nanometers and three different products were formed. The first arose from a 2 plus 2 cycloaddition of the two alkenes present in the quinone and steroid frameworks. This was formed in a 29% yield and the structure was proven using extra crystallography. The next product was formed from a 2 plus 2 cycloaddition between the alkene and the carbonyl, which is commonly known as a paterno buki reaction. This was formed in a 15% yield, and we can see from the regiochemistry that the quinone was in a different reacting conformation than when it reacted to form the cyclobutane. Also formed in this reaction was a cyclobutane product, formed from a crossed alkene 2 plus 2 cycloaddition. This occurred in a similar reacting conformation to the paterno buki reaction, but in this case, the cycloaddition occurred between the two alkene groups. The structure of this unusual product could also be confirmed with extra crystallography. 
With this cyclo-addition complete, they can then carry out a 1-2 anionic rearrangement cyclopropane fragmentation sequence. Reacting the compound with tetrabutyl ammonium acetate, first deprotonates the alpha position, forming an enolate that can undergo a rearrangement to form a cyclopropane ring, together with the cleavage of a carbon-carbon bond in the cyclobutane group, which forms an enol upon protonation. The authors have investigated the mechanism of this reaction, and they propose that a concerted mechanism is at play. Using DFT studies, they could see that in the HOMO-4 and HOMO-3 orbitals, that the bonding orbitals of carbon-10 and the hydroquinone dianion are symmetrically matched, though they show a large difference in energy. This suggests that this interaction cannot significantly stabilise the transition state by orbital mixing, and therefore the process is Woodward-Hoffman forbidden. Though this reaction is formally forbidden, this does not mean that it cannot occur. It just means that it is highly unfavoured. In this particular molecule, there is a release of high ring strain energy and the evolution of local aromaticity in the transition state, and this overrides this high energy penalty, allowing for the reaction to occur. Once the cyclopropane ring has formed, the molecule is once again deprotonated, triggering the fragmentation of the cyclopropane ring and reforming an enolate, which is highly favoured due to the restoration of aromaticity within the ring. The addition of boron trifluoride to the reaction mixture then activates the exoalkene, allowing for the enolate to undergo intramolecular attack, forming the product in an 84% yield. With this key intermediate now formed, they could transform it into several members of the disiherbol family. To form disiherbol A, it was hydrogenated using palladium and carbon and hydrogen gas, forming the product in an 83% yield. Crucially, the characterization data of this compound matched that of the naturally reported substance. Using the same intermediate, they could then form disiherbol D. This was done using an alkene rearrangement with a rhodium trichloride complex. This formed the product in a 66% yield, and as we saw with disiherbol A, the characterization data matched the natural substance, prompting a revision of the previously reported structure. To access disiherbol C, they first deprotonated the molecule with sodium hydroxide and then methylated it with methyl iodide. This methyl group was introduced as a protecting group to allow the compound to be subject to a Rayleigh oxidation. In this reaction, selenium dioxide undergoes an ene-type reaction, where the alkene attacks the selenium, while the oxygen abstracts a hydrogen atom, forming a new carbon-carbon double bond. The other selenium-bound oxygen attacks this double bond, triggering a rearrangement to restore the alkene to its original position, together with the formation of a selenol intermediate that can be further oxidised to produce the enone in a 56% yield. This enone was then hydrogenated using palladium and carbon, and the methoxy ether was then cleaved using boron tribromide. This first coordinates the oxygen, and then another equivalent of boron tribromide reacts with this adduct, forming an anionic boron tetrabromide intermediate. This highly nucleophilic species can attack the methyl group, eliminating an intermediate that can be hydrolyzed upon workup to produce the alcohol in a 62% yield and complete the synthesis of the revised structure of disiherbal C. Well that's everything for this video. Join me next time where we'll look at the total synthesis of a cell E9.